All right, you should have lab number 10 out so that you can be filling this thing in as we go. So the first set of muscles that we're going to look at are muscles of facial expression. I'm going to make a note for you somewhere like, oh, bummer, right about, right about here. Except I have to change the size of my pen because, you know, that's always how we roll. The muscles, I'm going to make notes as we go of who is innervating these muscles, who is telling these muscles uh, when to contract. And that information is, you can either learn it now or you can learn it later. This, you will be accountable for learning the nerves that I mentioned. And it probably is easier to kind of hear them once. I will not test you on them for exam number, number two. They will be tested on for exam number three. So if you get to go back and review for exam number three, that might be kind of handy. For the muscles of facial expression, all of them are innervated by cranial nerve number seven, which is super handy. Facial expression nerves are innervated by cranial nerve seven, which is the facial nerve. And all of them, every single one that I'm going to make a note of right here. So let's look at our muscles. First of all, we have platysma. And I'm just going to number them so I don't have to write the whole thing down. Platysma is a very superficial muscle found in your neck. And we can see it on Frank. It's kind of floppy because platysma is weird. You'll notice on your lab that I don't require you to know the two attachments for platysma because it like attaches, it's like a blanket. It's like a huge muscle. It goes all the way down and even attaches to your deltoid. And when it shortens, most of the time, if you've got the muscle and you know where it is and you know what it looks like, you can kind of figure out its action because you can look at the striations, which are right about here. See how they're all going in this direction? And I'm telling you that they go all the way out here. So if they shorten, what happens? What happens to the skin in my neck? Yeah, that's called a grimace face, and that is the action of platysma. So it's this superficial muscle that when it contracts, it causes the grimace. Just right about like that. What nerve innervates platysma? The facial nerve, cranial nerve number seven. Now we have two orbicularises. We have orbicularis, which makes you think orb, round. We've got orbicularis oris and orbicularis oculi. And check it out. Do you see my two round muscles? Do you think this is oris or oculi? Here's another round muscle. Tell me true, oris or oculi? Uh-huh. Oris around the mouth, like oral. Oculi around the eye, like ocular lens. And think about, look at how those muscles are. Look at the direction of the striations. Remember that these striations actually show you how the muscle shortens and contracts, and when the striations shorten, look at that shape that happened. So orbicularis oculi, when those muscles shorten, you actually blink your eye. That's the action of orbicularis oculi. Orbicularis oris, when those muscles shorten, you give somebody a kiss. Those are easy. Buccinator. Buccinator looks like it should be pronounced Buccinator or Bucinator, it's Buccinator. And here's where it is. It's a deep muscle, and it's actually found right in here. It's embedded. It's deep. It's deep to this big guy, and we'll talk about this big guy in a second. But it's deep to that, and we can actually go in. Oh, uh -huh. and that is where Buccinator is located. So Buccinator. Here's what it does. Are you ready? Um, people who are phenomenal trumpet players have really well-developed buccinators because this is the action. Mm -mm. Uh -huh. 
That was it. I squished all the air out of my cheeks. And when I squished the air out of my cheeks, that was buccinator squishing. That was buccinator contracting. It isn't built well. It helps squish air out of your cheeks, but it also helps hold food in your mouth. So buccinator is, comes in handy when you're chewing because it keeps the food next to your um, teeth where the chewing is taking place and not like lost in your cheeks. I mean, buccinator can make it so you can bite your cheeks because it contracts. I, I guarantee I'm never going to want to watch this lecture. <laughs> All right, frontalis. Did you try to find frontalis in your book already? And did you think, huh, help? <laughs> well, here's the deal. I don't even know what number we're on. Frontalis looks like number five. This is frontalis, but guess what? It has two bodies. It has a body, like it has a part of the muscle here in your forehead. And when you go like this, when you raise your eyebrows and make those little wrinkles in your forehead, that's frontalis contracting. But this is one body of it, and it actually has like a big giant connective tissue structure that attaches it to another body back here, like in the occipital portion of your skull. We're only dealing with the front part, and rather than learn the body of occipital frontalis, the frontal body of occipital frontalis, we're just going to call it frontalis and begin with that. So that is this muscle right here, and its action is to raise your eyebrows. Who's left? The one that makes my favorite expression of all. That would be our good friend, Zygomaticus. Now check it out. Zygomaticus, there's two of them, and here's one of them, and here's the other one. Here's one, and here's the other one. And they actually attach to uh, the zygomatic bone, which is right here. It's your cheekbone. And the zygomatic bone, and it also attaches to your, the corners of your lips. And so it actually does a smile action. Thank you, Zygomaticus, for making me smile. The next two muscles that we're going to talk about right now are involved in chewing. I think you could argue that buccinator is also involved in chewing, but um, these two muscles are like, like mandible upon maxilla teeth grinding together, like that kind of action. And those are um, masseter, which is here, and temporalis, which is here. Now, everything that I said previously is innervated by facial nerve. These guys are innervated. Temporalis and masseter are innervated by cranial nerve five, the third branch, which is the mandibular branch of trigeminal. Oh, you'll get that joke soon enough. So this is the mandibular, I don't even know why I'm going to write this down, branch. But if you write cranial nerve V3 on there for both temporalis and masseter, then you are going to be ahead of the game for um, doing our cranial nerve lab. It's always nice to get ahead of the game. Is that even possible in anatomy? Yes, do it. Okay, both of these guys. The masseter is attaching to the zygomatic bone. Wait a minute, is that even true? Masseter, I think it is true. It attaches to zygomatic, I'll just, yes, thank you. It attaches to zygomatic arch, and it also attaches to your mandible. And I have a picture to show you of the mandible to, to show you where exactly it attaches. And again, you know, these are, we didn't do mandible parts yet when we did our bones, but the masseter attaches to this little process right here, which is called the coronoid process. So does temporalis. Temporalis attaches to this thing like that. Masseter also attaches. Masseter attaches more like this in this direction, and it also comes all the way down and attaches to the flat portion of your mandible and to this little angle down here. Masseter is your biggest chomper, and temporalis is also involved. So go ahead and chomp, and you can feel your temporalis muscle, I'm, yeah, temporalis muscle contracting. 
you can also feel masseter contracting. It's a big guy. And it attaches to the mandible. Fantastic. That is round one of our axial muscles. So the next one we're going to look at the back and the neck.